wants the ball. Sobojinski is chasing it. Chasing him. And Kandeli saved. No one saw. Oh, he got his glove on it a second time. Mm, boy, this one's going to sting for a while. Late miscues. Allow the ball to get through, eventually resulting in this winning strike in the 89th minute for Orlando City. The team from O-Town defeated Charlotte FC 2-1 last night at Bank of America Stadium. But even though Charlotte lost, there's still a chance for the crown to make the playoffs. Julian's here to talk with someone who knows what is at stake. Julian? That's right. Here to break down last night in the road ahead is Willie P. Charlotte FC's radio play-by-play -play man. Willie, going into that last couple minutes right there, I felt that we're going to leave with points for sure maybe even three but and then we end up with none what, what happened well, it's a goal against the run of play julian unfortunately uh, that last 20 minutes of play right before stoppage time uh, was really dominated by charlotte especially after they got the equalizing goal from mckenzie Gaines in the 66th minute they really started to put the pressure on orlando and kind of looked like that side that we saw on wednesday against new york city but uh, a giveaway in the defensive half with anton walks overrunning a ball and not necessarily getting a chance to step to a foul and akindeli gets behind the defense and gets a pretty big shot on goal against kalina kalina makes a save but there's nobody back on defense and then Charlotte FC gets up the rebound, and they end up conceding the final goal, and it was too late to try and make anything happen forward, and just another crushing defeat that this team has suffered, and a very, very big playoff push right now. Look, you got no time to really kind of lick your wounds, because as you mentioned, we're in the thick of a playoff push. What do you make of Anton Wolk saying, this is on him? Because he came out there on Twitter admitting that, and that he's going to be better, taking, it, you know, uh, taking responsibility for what happened, even though we know it's a team game. It's a classy comment from a world-class player in Anton Walk, somebody who's kind of been through the wars. He's, he's done this with Atlanta United before, so it's not like he's a stranger to these type of atmospheres and these type of contests, but uh, it was his error, and I'm glad that he owned up to it. And right now, Charlotte FC, in that center back position, doesn't exactly have the best reinforcements right now after the loss of Guzman Carujo. They did get a Dilson Melanda, who uh, is from Rodez, second division in France. Don't know if necessarily he's ready to play yet. He was included in the 20. So we'll see whether or not he's employed in the next contest. But I do feel like Charlotte FC is going to keep that back four intact with those same two in the middle because I think for 90 of the 90, or 96 of the 97 minutes, Anton Walks was still pitch perfect. What do you think of, you know, we to speak about the goal there, obviously that got overshadowed with how the game ended, but Camille Uzwiak finding Mackenzie Gaines there. Okay, so this is this was a bright spot for two players where we really wanted to see more of them out on the pitch. So is that a positive coming? Coming from this week. It very much was, Julian. Uh, Yusviak's a player who's gotten a lot of stick from fans as a second DP who has come in here and unfortunately had not had any goal involvements until last night and he put a very big service into McKenzie Gaines who just continues to prove that he's getting better on Wednesday he had the primary assist on Carol Svidersky's goal against New York and also drew the penalty that resulted in the third goal this is a great header from Gaines in from uh, from uh, Juzviak Gaines if you remember had that big game against Richmond in the U.S. Open Cup but this was his first MLS tally he's somebody who I feel like continues to really shine that speed has always been there for him and now the final product is starting to fall it's a good good sign for charlotte fc who need more movement going forward because they failed to get that outside of that one real attack speaking of that movement one person that we know that's been great is been uh, andre shinyashiki any concerns because of the way that latanzio played the matchups later on in the game I know it's something that a lot of fans are looking at right now from Andre. I know that it was a big article written by our friend Jorge Gonzalez. And the thing about Andre is that he's playing a position right now where it's hard to take Carol Svidersky off the field. Sure. They are loath to use him as a winger uh, because they've really liked what they've gotten from Vargas and Gaines as well as Jordi Reyna, who uh, didn't play on Wednesday even. So they tried to get him back in there at the end of the game. Didn't really show as much as you would have wanted him to. But at this point right now, Shinyashiki, they look at him as a striker. So as a result, I feel like because of that uh, they don't want to take Carroll off if they don't have to and uh, it's just a position where it's really really hard yeah. it's almost like a quarterback you don't want to uh, take your quarterback out late when you're needing points yeah, that's true okay speaking of needing points we need points in the playoff race we get we have another matchup with Toronto coming up here and then three of our next four teams actually are not in the playoffs right now will the playoffs are, are fading away what do we need to do heading first into Toronto to make a win at least they're at home 
Well, they need to necessarily they need to ride on that home fan advantage because of the fact that they do have a Friday game with the Carolina Panthers against Buffalo. Hopefully, we can kind of ride some of that momentum off the end of that and get uh, get something into Saturday. Just because of the fact that I do feel like uh, this might be the most important home game for the rest of the year. If Charlotte FC doesn't get three points in this one, the math works out really, really hard. I know we talked about this about a week ago. Mm -hmm. The math got better with the three points over New York City, but uh, falling back with that home point loss against. Uh, Orlando City, it's going to be difficult if they don't get three points against Toronto because there's a pretty big side coming in, but these all just get more and more tough and more and more important as we go throughout the down the stretch. Who is this going to fall on in terms of looking in that locker room? Who are they going to lean on there? I mean, Latanzo, he's an interim head coach here. Who's the person that's going to really have to bring the momentum to make sure that we can make playoffs? You lean on your veterans, you lean on guys like Christian Fuchs, you lean on an Anton Walks, a Christian Kalina, and also even a guy like Karol Svidersky who's played in big matches like this. I do feel like your best players have to really show up at this critical and vital time. I'm also curious to see whether or not we get some of those reinforcements we talked about a couple weeks ago, like yeah. Nathan Burnett right back and possibly Nuno Santos still waiting on the appointments for those guys in terms of their visas. But if those guys can get back before Saturday, that could give Charlotte FC a real boost. Well, I know that we here at Queen City News. We're not giving up on playoffs just yet. We know that you and Jessica Charman in the booth aren't giving up either. Willie P, thanks for always making time for us in the morning. Still time to make things happen, Julian. You never know. Exactly. All right.